This is an unsponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. It's not very hard to install recessed lighting on a second floor when it has an attic above, like we did in the kitchen. But now that we're working on the first floor, we don't have that luxury. In today's video, I'm going to show all my tips and tricks to install recessed lighting in the basement where there's no attic for me to run wires. <laughs> Biggest drill I ever <laughs> Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. Now lighting here in the family room has got to change. Right now, the only fixture in the ceiling is this one up here, which I took down and I just put a temporary light there. Uh, this is a huge recessed can that needs to come out. I do have to get the wire from that though to put in the rest of the ceiling lights. What we're gonna do for those is I've got these really low profile recessed lights. These are LED. These things are, they're four inch, 550 lumens. And um, these are really pretty cool. Look how thin they are. And they just stick into your sheetrock. Now, the other end has a power supply that gets wired in, but, and that just gets up there too. So what we did is we laid them out here. Uh, we're gonna put six of them in the ceiling of this room. And that's how that's gonna work. Now coming in from the garage here in this foyer, we're getting rid of this old piece of junk light. But what we've decided to do here is we're using um, a, an LED gimbal light. These are three inch, these are even smaller footprint than the other ones, and they provide a much more dramatic light. So we're gonna put four of them in in this space, and uh, it's just gonna really light this area nicely, mostly down on the floor. It's not gonna be spread as wide. So you'll see the difference when they're installed. And now the hard part is I just gotta figure out how to get the wiring from that one, I gotta, you know, obviously putting in these lights is, is a challenge. So I will check back and let you know how I did it. Okay, now think about it. I needed to install 11 lights in the family room and foyer, plus two new circuits for the underfloor heating, plus a new water line for the refrigerator. So it made sense for me to remove a strip of drywall on the ceiling to run all those lines through the joists. At this point, I had new drywall from that wall that we built, plus I was planning on skim coating this textured ceiling anyway, so it wouldn't have been a big deal to patch it. I'd also have to patch this hole from the old foyer light. No big deal. <laughs> Luckily, I've gotten good at patching drywall over the years. Yeah. Glad that's gone. Now what I got here is I could see where the wiring is done for this, this fixture. And of course there's a cable staple. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cable staple on that wire. And I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that off and maybe I can pull that wire through. We'll see. So the switch turned power on to a wire that comes up to the wall, and it's this one right here. And I tested that with my tester, so I know. This one is hot all the time. This one is switched, and it goes in that direction. I could actually feel it. So I put a, a line on the, the ceiling here, because I could stick my arm up and feel it. So what I was trying to do is I want to pull that wire so that I could get it into this hole. This is one of my new lights. All right, and there's another one over there. Now, I couldn't pull it. It just won't budge. So I knew they had a wire staple, a cable staple in the side, in the joist that was holding it. And I could reach the first one, but I made an educated guess that they probably have more and that's why I couldn't pull the wire. Anyway, so I said, my wire's coming from here to there. This is the joist right next to that box right there, that funky box. So, and there it is, and you can see my wires coming out. So I made this hole right here, and lo and behold, there's the cable staple. 
So I gotta pull that one out and see, maybe there might be another one in here somewhere. I'm not sure. All right, success. I was able to pull it. There was another cable staple in here somewhere, but I was able to yank it and it pulled right through, thankfully. So I have this wire in there. I'm gonna patch that hole. And it's not gonna matter at all, even these things, because I'm gonna skim coat this whole ceiling. It's textured and it had these ugly beams on it. So they have to skim coat it. So what I wanted to do was take that wire, bring it back to here and bring it out this hole. You're not allowed to make joints in the middle of the ceiling. So it's not like I could just cut it there and run a new wire. So that's why I wanted to use that wire and get it out that hole. And that's my next step. By the way, these Vaunt lights are really awesome, especially doing electrical because you really can't hold on to a flashlight. So I just put it on my head they're so inexpensive and they come in a two pack and you know, I have to give a shout out to the company because they did send them to me to try out and I really do like them. And I shared it on my social media too because they're just such a great deal. Anyway, highly recommend them. All right, certainly took a little bit of effort but I got the wire coming out the right hole. This is where the first light is gonna be and this is where power is gonna come into it. That wire comes from there, I pulled it all the way from there through and through here and then fed it through there. That's how I got here. And then all I have to do is drill the rest of the holes and then, uh, then I'm golden. Then I just gotta run the wires. And the only challenge is gonna be that I know I have blocking in the middle here, but I have a way of solving that too. is how do I get the wire through that hole? Something's gotta be difficult. It can't always be easy. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> playing a video game. <laughs> Look. In case you missed that tool, I'm using the same hole cutter that I used to install the kitchen lights in episode 16. Highly recommend it. I discovered a better way to snake the wires through the hole. There's a little hole right on the end of that bit. So I took my drill off and I pushed it into the hole until I saw it over here but I can still reach it from that hole. And then I'm just gonna push this through gently. And here comes the drill bit. Oh, and of course it's gotta get through the, the hole. And there it is. Nice. Yeah, that was easier. 
I also realized there is a little hole on the end of the, uh, the drill bit too. So you could actually do it in both directions. That was much easier. Look at that. That's outstanding. That is a great drill bit. This one is three quarter inch Klein tools. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Highly recommend it. All right, starting right now. See you guys later. Be right. safe. Till next time. All right. And this goes in like this. Just like that. Okay. Now, hit the switch. Look at that. It works. All right. Turn it off. So out with the old and in with the new. These are tiny little three inch LED eyeballs that we got here. These are from Jellison. Mm, I'll put a link in the description, but that's what they look like. And they can be positioned in all different, wherever you want to point them. And uh, they cast a really nice straight light. It's a little dramatic because it's not really putting it on the walls. Now to contrast that, these are the ones that are going in the family room over there. So we're gonna put six of these up there. These are obviously a much more scattered light, but that's the difference between the two. But they both work with the same transformer, so that's why I was able to just stick this up here. And uh, I'll put up a real one now. Okay. These just flip up like that, and they go friction fit right in the hole. Like that. And here you can see the finished product in the foyer here. You can see these, these are the little three inch eyeball lights and the shadows that they cast on the wall. They're really pretty cool. Let me back up and you can see this better. You know, you could point that to artwork on the wall or something like that. They're not doing that. They're just leaving them like this because they're just much more dramatic. They light the floor rather than the room. And in here, you can see the other lights. These are the uh, a much wider light. These are four inch and much more even lighting. There's six of them out here in this den slash family room where the fireplace is. Oh, and by the way, this ceiling here, yeah, that's a plank ceiling that uh, we are going to show in the next episode. You'll see how we did that. But this is what the finished product looks like. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you haven't yet, and we'll see you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. Look. That has inch and a quarter. That's the little one. That's the little one.